Jesus. I found some royalty free music. So I shouldn't get all blocked on here on Facebook. Yay! I'm just moving the camera around. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. She's all penciled up, so now I just need to get my colors. Now granted, this is much more yellow than I usually work with. So, fun, fun kind of compensate for that. Excuse me. How is everybody this morning? I was asked to draw this character. She's from the IDW comic book. She and her name is Mistress of Flames. Or Flame. Looks like a pretty boss character, actually. This was given to me at Pensacon, but because robots and things, um, you know, that are more rigid like this are not something that are my go-to that I normally draw, I asked if I could take it home and work on it, and I was given a very enthusiastic thumbs up, so... That's why she's here with me. And hi, James. I have no idea what I'm listening to. I just found royalty free music. The first song was okay. This one's kind of. Uh... Things are going good. Finally getting back into some normalcy, which is always nice. I would have been on earlier, but I think Wednesdays are going to be my chiropractor appointments. I kind of, I think my chiropractor is seeing it as a challenge to try to help fix my upper back. Even though I'm laughing, I'm like, this is a year's worth of sitting at a desk. 
that you're trying to undo here. He's like, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> but dude, oh my goodness, he fixed my ankle with one pop. It's crazy. The one that I sprained really severely. So if you have sprained an ankle after it has healed, not while it is still swollen and hurt, I suggest finding a good chiropractor. You just did one pop and like, oh my gosh, my foot works. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, complimenting the line work. This one's gonna be fun. Yeah, back pain is, is kind of part of it um, from leaning over desk. I mean, you know, it's just how it goes. I didn't realize how much I was carrying in my upper back um, and how tensed up I was, like under my shoulder from using my arm like this a lot until he was all like, pop, 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 pop. And I was like, oh my God, I broke it. I'm gonna die. <laughs> but it's all good. Yeah, she's gonna come out pretty fun. I'm, I'm excited. I was nervous with this commission actually, because again, like I said, I don't normally draw characters like this. Um, they, you know, I, I'm not really the as confident with like machinery and stuff as with other things, but um, I got really excited when I saw the character's design and I was like, yeah, I wanna try this at home. She's pretty boss. I don't know if she's a good guy or a villain or whatever, but I just think that she's pretty cool. Yeah, Carl, it's, it's the same. Yeah, going to a masseuse, it helps. It really does help. Yeah, there is a delay. I apologize, guys. Plus, I have to, like, stop and, and read. But I'll be sure if you guys have any questions for me regarding Copics or sketch covers or, you know, I'll try to answer as best as I can. And I'll read your question aloud. And like I said, I'm having to kind of compensate this paper is darker. Doesn't roll away. <laughs> so like normally this would be really light. If you can see it over here, right here. It's a really kind of a light orange, but on this paper it's a lot darker, so. And I am referring to this character design here. And I found on the internet as a reference for drawing her. But it seems the paper itself has taken the marker pretty well, so that's always nice. It's always a bummer when you get those one sketch covers that just don't take marker and you're like, I'm so sorry, I broke it. And then tonight, 
I'll be doing a Twitch stream with Alora from Voltron. I'm really loving the remake that's come out for Voltron. Pretty darn cool. And Alora is pretty awesome. James, do you give yourself a timeline on how much you want to accomplish on any given day? Um, yes and no, because a lot of times when I do that, I end up not meeting it. Um, but with these, with these commissions, what I did is I drew them up yesterday. Uh, actually, I ended up drawing, I finished my Marvel submissions and sent those in. Yay! Fingers crossed, everybody! Um, I basically sent them the equivalent of two covers and, you know, what they decide to do with it, they, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll call me. Um, and after I did that, I went through my commission lists and she is definitely one of the first ones on top there. So I was like, okay, I want to get this done. Allura is more kind of a for me thing. But she was one I've been meaning to draw for some time. So I drew up Allura really quick, kind of on the fly there, and um, penciled out a couple more things. So I guess, James, yes and no. She's without, my, uh, she's without a lion. It's just a headshot because what I'm wanting to do basically for myself is work on doing some pretty portraits. Uh, some better portraits is what I'm looking at trying to do. So I figured why not work on Allura as part of the portrait stuff. I realized that this is all blacked out right here. me a second. I see you guys talking, but it's a brush pen. Okay. Wonderfully vague of you. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, so I guess yes and no. Um, how about uh, Simone gives me timelines <laughs> that tells me to hurry my butt up. How about that? That's a good answer. <laughs> It is accurate. It's totally accurate. Like this one smells like Jen. Jen. I'm like, it's robots. Robots are hard. She's like, you can do it. Get it done. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then, I come, and then I draw her up and I'm like, it's not that hard. I like it. I want to draw more robots. Bye, Carl. Talk to you later, buddy. And Carl, um, aren't you aiming for a commission? If so, get in touch with Simone. I think it's you. We have two Carls, so I apologize if I've gotten that wrong. What in the world am I listening to? I don't know if I like this song. Cue the whiplash snapping sound. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's Simone with my commissions. She gives me calendars. Then she makes sure that I open the calendars. But that's that that is, you know, par for the course of being assistant slash apprentice. If not, I would I'd get overwhelmed. Aw, <laughs> oh, come on. I like my music, even though it's kind of weird. It was turned up, though. I'll turn it down. I was just happy to have music. Dyslexia. Okay, so that's dark back there too. Got it. Hmm. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm trying to figure out our design. I'm like, what did I color here? It's like I embellished a little bit in certain parts. like to play something like that too but I can't because then I'd get kicked off of Netflix honestly I'd be probably I would probably be playing like my 80s soundtrack with this one but again I can't because Facebook would be like no ma'am you are not allowed you shall not pass and again here we are James winging it to call. Yeah, this is the copyright stuff. I'm actually, I had a dispute my speed paint that I did. Um, because copyright hit it the second that I posted it. We didn't even see it go up. And uh, got hit with the copyright stuff. But honestly, it falls under the, the fair law. But they have 30 days to reply, so yay! I'll figure my way around it. I'll find some non-copyrighted stuff, even though I want to put my music on there. It's one of those things where it is what it is, unfortunately. And hey, at least this is this music is at least upbeat enough to keep me drawing faster, and it doesn't sound like I killed Bambi's mother. So, woohoo! Small victories.
When you color, do you lay out your pens to aid your shading or do you do your artist thing and grab away? I have a whole bunch stacked up um, a pie, but as I'm coloring so that I don't put, I don't put them back. I actually have them right here and they're going to start falling down into my lap um, pretty soon. And that's what I do is I keep them to the side, but it's not in a very organized fashion. Because I have totally done that, like, I'm going to stay organized, and then I put them back, and then I forget which one I grabbed, and I grabbed the completely wrong color. Sometimes it's not so bad. A lot of times it's terrible, and you're just like, ah, it's scrambling. Have a plan. Not the best well executed plan, but there is a plan. Now as far as like mapping out colors for this, no. I knew I was going to be using mostly yellow reds. Like right now I'm combining YR21 with YR15. YR21 being the lighter color, oddly enough. And um, But I just knew that from looking at her design and stuff, I knew that I would be using the yellow red family of Copics. And this one I'm probably only going to be able to layer up like two to three layers of uh, Copic color before the paper starts um, going berserk just because this paper it can take the Copics okay um, but you can already see it's starting to kind of blah, 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 bubble and stuff just because the paper itself is thin. It's still pretty good paper though. The noise effect is like a professional. Yes. And metal is pretty simple and basic to color. I'm going to do these orange. I, don't, I know that's not what it says on the design, but I'm, I'm doing it. 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 You step back about a hundred times looking for flaws and mistakes. Yes. I do step back. Actually, um, that was one of the jokes when it came to me figuring out how to set up a camera 
people were like, oh, just do a GoPro and put it on your head. And I'm like, no, because I fidget around, wait, like I stop and you'll see me do like this. That's me actually backing up and lean back uh, in my chair. I will flip my stuff upside down, as you've seen. Um, when I'm working with it in Photoshop, like when I'm doing my roughs, I flip it. Uh, you know, I, I do the flips a lot just to point out all the flaws before I go to print it. That's a good way to find if a face looks really messed up, is to flip the image. And uh, so I do a lot of that. And yeah, I step back a whole bunch. Or lean back is more accurate while I'm working. A lot of times when you see me not working, it's, it's me leaning back. And I'll do the whole eye squint at it. Now, I don't do the whole thumb measurements because... I just, I just wing that. I'm not painting here. Just drawing. And no matter how many times James says, uh, fans like me tell you how good a piece is, do you see that one thing? All the time. All the time and every time. Every single freaking time. <laughs> That's the bone. <laughs> In fact, there are times, and Simone can attest to this too, the column, the column boys. <laughs> um, I, I get, I, I go through phases where I get downtrodden about my art, and I think that that's something that most artists go through normally, um, anyway. And she has to be like, okay, stop it. And I either get really pouty pouty pants or even like, I'm giving up, I'm quitting, I'm no good, I'm not going to do it anymore. So, you know, we all have, that's not dark enough, that's not the right one. We all have those moments, I think. And if we didn't, I don't think that we'd be good artists. That's too dark. And as you can see, I'm winging it. A lot of artists plan ahead of time, and I think that that's a really smart thing to do. Um, I just... This morning I was at the chiropractor, so... I did plan enough to, to draw this out. Self-doubt is, is a thing that can either propel you or can hinder you. And cripple you so you know a little bit of humble pie is just fine it's in fact it's a good thing you don't want to be powered by your ego but too much of it and it can totally mess with your head and and you know force you to to stop even trying and you shouldn't let it do that So like right now, for the shading, getting back into the whole Kupik talking, I am using an, a red violet with a yellow red, which makes for an interesting color combo. It's also, if you don't try, I mean, trust me, I can totally understand getting stuck in that, that mindset of, I'm just, you know, comparing and, uh, being afraid to try and things like that, or you, you're not happy with where you are. I can totally understand that because it's, I think that that's something that every artist goes through. Um, especially, you know, social media is a great thing and it's also kind of, a bad thing too because you can get stuck in that headspace when you're you know on social stuff and you're looking at all this beautiful artwork that people are posting and it seems effortless and you're just kind of like uh and stuff but you know that's when you kind of have to shake yourself out of it and be like no all right if I want to get better then I gotta have to I have to try and you know finish things finished is better than perfect that's my motto these days. Finish. But 
I don't know why it's filming so blurry. I'm sorry. It's my camera, I guess. Yeah, the whole just telling yourself to finish and not not be overwhelmed by what you see. I mean, it's, it's great. It's awesome to, to get inspiration, but sometimes that can also um, weigh you down, I think. Like, you see this stuff and you're like, oh my gosh, I'll never be there. Or, you know, well, so-and-so is doing it, so why, you know, I, I, I can't. It's, I think it's easy, like I said, to fall into that trap of that, that headspace of, of doubt. And then you get stuck to not even try and not even go for it. And, you know. That was that was me with my Marvel submissions. Hey, being total total honest here, full disclosure, uh, with the Marvel stuff, I actually was not really happy with the way one was going, and I started to get kind of mopey, and then I was like, well, you know what? Okay, let's try the other two. Really liked the other two, so turned in two back to back and said, put on the other one. So. Don't get stuck in that, in that rut. Stay out of it. I think that's when you need to just put this stuff aside and, and just try to do your thing and go at your pace. Learn the way you learn. And enjoy it, because it's a fun process. Finish not perfect. Yes, Preston, it makes total sense just finish something and it might not look all that great you might not like the way it turned out but at least you finished it move on take the lessons you learned and go to the next one it's like those little bracelets that have a word on it I'm gonna get mine I'm going to get one one day and it's going to say, finish! <laughs> what would Simone say? Finish! I didn't literally poot on it. Come on. I just said poot on it. It's a southernism. Someone told me the other day, if you created your art to be admired, you won't ever be happy. You have to love what you do. Yay, they drive you to do more. That's awesome. Well, I think, um, yes and no, because, I mean, I'm my own worst critic, too. I'm really bad. Like, I look back at stuff and I harp on it all the time, especially my old stuff. Um, but I think... What they were talking about, James, is if you're trying to sit there to to create to appeal to everyone, you're gonna you're not filling your own artistic cup. You're not satisfying your creativity. You're trying to satisfy a crowd, and by doing that, you kind of you short sell yourself. You kind of, um, I guess, cut yourself off at the knees, so to speak. Because you're not feeding your own creativity. You're not giving it, it's not for you and it doesn't, you know, help you in any way spiritually or however way you want to explain it. So you end up getting stuck just feeding the beast, so to speak, which is everybody else instead of yourself. 
and then you're like kind of like no, you know, it's, it's it's not gratifying. It's not fun. It's That's where you see artists who kind of get a little angry sometimes when they try to, you know, do something for themselves and they get a little backlash because the fans kind of harp on them. And it's like, you know, give them a little room to breathe. Give them a little time to, to express themselves creatively. It might not be like what you're used to seeing, but you're, you're going to see something so awesome if you just give them some, some creative space. <laughs> oh, come on. Mm -mm. I think that my music stopped. Let's see. Nope. Yes, it's over. It's just quiet. And simple. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Don't know how to take that. But I appreciate that. I think. Oh, <laughs> I usually say it makes it look easy. Trust me, I watch some of these videos and they're all like, la la la, and I'm like, how are you dirty, a witch? You're amazing. <laughs> it's all good. Especially speed paints. Speed paints make everything look magical. <laughs> True. No, you see the artwork looks easy. I don't know. Never mind. Oh, it's all good. It's 
Simone and I are just being jerks. You jerk. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> All right, you do. Only one allowed to have hissy fits is me. Is <laughs> he coming on? Uh oh! No, no, he's a bit. Do you have a background plan for this commission? Something easy. Um, nothing too elaborate. If I had a, wanted like a drawn out background, I would have drawn it on here. So just a color splash or two. Oh, something, something. Figure it out. Sunny beaches. <laughs> This is looking better than some of the Polish IDW work. <laughs> You're sweet. You're very sweet. Thank you.
pretty cool that you can color and talk at the same time. <laughs> uh, I think that that's from having children. And a lot of times I, I find that, you know, drawing and coloring and stuff at the same time. I mean, there are times when I get really intense into it and I forget and I get real quiet. But like I, when you're around other artists and you're in a circle and everybody's drawing and stuff, we don't mind. I think that the biggest problem like with crowds at shows is that people expect eye contact. And I'm like, I can't look at you while I'm doing this. Just not that talented yet. When I get to the skill of being able to to draw and, and not look at the paper, that that would be awesome. Simone, so we'll have to reach out to the guy who did the um, Transformer interview, which we need to post that, by the way, and um, show him this commission. I didn't even think about it until just now. Oh, awesome! Yay! Did I totally snatch your kid? I have a tendency to do that at shows. Like someone who's got like a nice little kid and I'm like, oh, can I hold him? Yay! And I pick him up. <laughs> oh, there's that sweet laugh. <laughs> Scaring everybody on the internet. It's fun times. what we're listening to. We don't need talking, just play music. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no, it's it's talking on the music. I'm like, we don't need talking. Shush. Shut your mouth. Just play the weird music. more talking. Thank you. Thank you, James. It's a fun piece. Fun, 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 fun,
funkies. Yeah, <laughs> true. But again, that stuff is probably copyrighted, so Facebook would be all like, nope. Same with YouTube. So that's why I get this, whatever it is, talky talky. straight no degree no art training no apprentice just your um well I mean yes and no 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 college no art school I didn't take art classes in high school either um but the one thing I did have was as I grew up and stuff I had I was always surrounded by art because my mother designed dog food bags, so my mother's very good at realism. Um, and she also has a really interesting kind of uh, quirky style. She did a lot of like Gafer's ads back, you know, back in the heyday when it was all uh, traditional stuff, and they didn't use photographs. Um, so, I mean, I was always surrounded with that. And then my dad was, he did blueprints and um, designed airplanes and stuff. So I had all the, I was always around like the drafting supplies. Um, I remember um, my dad working on airplane stuff and I'd be under his drawing table and stuff. So, I mean, I was always surrounded by it, but it was never this genre. So I guess what I could say is that at a young age, I knew the basics. Um, like my mother would talk to me about composition and, and shading, which is now called rendering, which I didn't know for a really long time. Um, and uh, things like that. And I just thought that that was normal things that people talked about. Didn't realize that it was something very different until I started going to school and realized that people weren't surrounded by this type of stuff. Now, my parents didn't push it on me. They supported it when I did it, but they were just like, you know, just do it, just have fun. And they didn't hold my hand and show me how to do it either. Kind of like the same thing I'm doing with my kids is you just gotta go and do it, you know, just just go try. And um, so it's not like I had the apprenticeship or anything like that with my parents. Yes, I always had the support and stuff, but it was more of a push the baby bird out the nest and you figure it out, <laughs> fly or don't type thing when it came to art. And, uh, and it was cool because then you, you're not stuck in their style. You're able to figure out what you want to do and, and stuff like that. Um... And... I guess by having that, I had a style, and then I fell in love with comic books, so I started following the comic book stuff, I drew really bad manga, um, things like that, and then I stopped for a really long time, and didn't start back up until much later in life. Yeah, I figured it out. That was basically the long and short of it. I figured this crap out. <laughs> I'm 
still figuring it out. Copics are still relatively new to me. influences um I would say in my early days in my early years um when it comes to drawing like as far as like being influenced early on with comic books it was like Jim Lee and Campbell but basically the whole image crew that broke away from Marvel um back in the 90s I was in love with that was when I fell in love with comics, but um, gosh, these days it's a it's a plethora of artists. It's ridiculous. So many. <laughs> yes, they were. They were. I swear that was awesome. And that was that was back, you know, when you op when you got a comic book and you opened it and it was just like, wow, it was amazing. They, you know, that was digital coloring it just started coming out, so that was something completely new and whatnot, and nobody was used to seeing that. It was spawn and all of that. That was those are my jams basically. Yarp. But um. I would say like these days, um, I really love Megan H Hendricks. God, I'm going to have to just call her and be like, tell me how to say your last name. Um, she has got a hold of color like nobody's business. Um, the woman can use color like crazy and is incredibly talented. Uh, her color work is just off the freaking chart um, I think she's just got kind of a instinctive way of, of knowing colors is pretty awesome Louis L-O-I-S-H um, she's one I just got her new art book she just sent out the second one I kick started that one because uh, she's Incredibly awesome and talented. Does some amazing work. I like her character studies. Pretty cool. Um, Brian Frow, always a big influence, especially, you know, 80s stuff, 80 babies. Uh, we've all seen Brian Frow's stuff. Um, Adam Hughes is. is a brilliant pinup artist. He can draw beauty and personality incredibly well. So, and Terry Dostin can draw fabric folds like there's no tomorrow. The man drawing drapery alone is incredible, and he and his wife are an awesome duo. I don't, I, I, there's a lot out there. There's a lot in the industry that I admire, and there's a lot just artists in general 
that you know are separate from comics that people wouldn't really register that I would like that I admire and follow so I mean it's just um I'm influenced by a lot of stuff as long as it's pretty I'm like me it's mine it's mine it's mine it's mine it's mine it's mine, it's mine. Everybody say hi to Shane. <laughs> He's lurking. Oh yeah, I, gosh. There's a lot of artists that I love and just admire and I think are really amazing people and like I said, it's just really hard to name them all off the top of my head. I mean, if you looked at who I follow on Instagram alone, Instagram alone is enough to give you a complex <laughs> on a good day. <laughs> oh, there's so many talents on there. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I've, I've found quite a few artists on Instagram that I'm just like, wow, you are so amazing. I want to draw like you. Yeah, Shane's probably lurking because he's at work. Then, yeah, keep trying. Don't add. Don't give up. No giving up. All right, now we're going to work on this cape. No capes. Techno and jazz saxophone. The Duke. <laughs> no games! <laughs> this is Y11. yellow and the other one is yellow red 21 and what I am doing is making a gradient
15. Awesome ass gradients. Oh yeah, it's jazz saxophone time. Yes. It's nice and smooth. I've never heard jazz saxophone mixed with techno. This is awesome. <laughs> no problem. Thanks, James. Is that why you're getting sleepy? <laughs> so weird. Uh, the whole creating a, a gradient here. That's a little booing. That's why I flipped it over so I could pull in the colors this way. Nope, it's the coffee. <laughs> Probably. No, I think that techno music with, with jazz saxophone is the funniest combination I've ever heard in my life. It's literally the funniest thing I've ever heard. You see that pretty gradient there? I was just pulling it this way. I saw a tutorial. Someone said the to think of the Copics as pulling instead of trying to push them around the page, and I found that to be a very good uh, piece of advice. Because you can do both. You can push the ink around, or you can do like I'm doing and pull it. See, like this is pushing. This is kind of the pull. I 
it seems the YR21 kind of desaturates it a little bit. You can see it kind of turns like this kind of gray. That's why I'm going on top of it with this Y02, which is a really, really saturated yellow to give the color a little bit more pop. Use it as like a blender, blender tool. And, oh, I forgot. Um, I've got another set of Marvel sketch cards. Woo-woo! Yay, fun times. So I'm going to be doing those. I just realized that this is behind her, so it's going to be darker. Uh, I was just saying that I'm going to be doing the Marvel sketch cards. Not on here. I can't do. I can't draw them live or work on them. Eh, too many markers in my hand. Um, I was just mentioning that I will be doing them. I got another set, so that's always fundies. And I've got. Um, artist ones from my last one that I need to start working on. I think that those I can do live actually. Wonder Woman. Right, the Wonder Woman sketch cover. Gotcha.
so many commissions, so little time. I had originally inked this with brown ink because she was mostly all reds. So I wanted to kind of preserve that red. Now I'm going back in here with black ink <laughs> ah, I don't mean to. Those nibs are sharp. I'm actually permanently myself right there. Blink. Where 
gonna stab myself really good. Give myself a homemade tattoo. <laughs> so cool. Here you go. You should do tattoos. I did on my finger. Oh, is it just us? Aww. Everybody left. Oh, she's inking. She's not coloring anymore. Not entertaining. I'm also not talking. Inking makes me focus. I'm drawing a picture. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah, those dumb no, I don't know. Yay, Preston's here. <laughs> Yeah, she's looking pretty cool. Especially for the fact that I was like, I don't know if I could draw a transformer. Last time I drew a transformer had been ages. And it was one you can't really take liberties on. It's like Optimus Prime and stuff. You can't can't really go changing them up. Yay! <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> Man, Simone and I were just thinking that we were just in here by ourselves. We're all like, la, 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 la. <laughs> Hello. 
it's like you can't really rely on the whole who's watching because they've been oh no not through oh. um they can't like you know comment and stuff being at work so i don't know if like facebook like takes them down for not you know when you're not interacting with someone i don't know i don't know how that all works See, yeah, it's weird. It's like everybody was still in here watching, just like letting it play. But for us, you know, sitting here and stuff, it looks like there's only the two of us because I guess, you know, Simone and I were the only ones talking. So that's okay. Just always assume that there's like 10,000 people in here. And even when the audience is only one, you give them the best show you can. Again, at work, Simone. They're at work. <laughs> Badge info, yes. They want like a pirate girl and stuff. Which actually sounds really, really cute.
<laughs> there you go. Do it. And Simone, I think I actually have what you were suggesting the other day. I was digging through my art stuff. Yup, 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 yup. Now I sound like Ducky from the before time. I have some. I just um didn't really use them because I, uh, I didn't have anything to sharpen them with. But for overall blends like this. I don't know. I had taken off the, um, yep. Creta color. So see, I already had some, I just hadn't used it. And again, I just don't have any way to sharpen it to get it to a fine point. So I'd had these. And they work fine. Just, um, like I can't go through and do the little fine details around her face or the small, small stuff in here. But I can do the overall stuff. I want that sharp point. I have I have one of those sharpener thingies, but I just can't find it right now. And it would probably take me an hour to go through this studio with how much of a mess it is. So Another time. Sandpaper, um, I've got oh, a sandpaper sharpener thingy, and it's used to just it's sharpen pencils or charcoal pencils like these or, you know, whatever's, um, and you, it's like a little strip and it has a handle and then you sharpen and then you can take the sandpaper off to get a nice sharp, but the only drawback really is that it gets messy as heck. And I 
never seem to get the points as sharp as I want them. That's just me on any given day with anything. Nothing is ever as sharp as I want it to be. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about just using a pencil sharpener. to try that. Now we all find stuff that we like to use. Sometimes it works for some and doesn't for others. Get all smell of you, Simone. <laughs> oh, okay. No biggie. I'm glad you're enjoying it but totally understand that you're working don't get fired <laughs> like a second nature oh Simone dang <laughs> That was below the belt. Ooh, I felt that one. Dang, girl. <laughs> Vicious today. Vicious. <laughs> you are such a turd. Oh, I love you. <laughs> oh. Such a turd.
<laughs> last live stream. <laughs> Oh, I just lean over. <laughs> ah, no, you're fine. Just, uh, payback will be coming. It'll be coming. Just you wait. <laughs> Something's gonna happen. <laughs> You're my bestie. Super best friends. <laughs> It's all fine. I know you. Super shiny. Super shiny! I love when we do these videos and then it like randomly get on the topic of nail polish. I told the lady at the nail salon that their hits on my live stream, she just kind of looked at me weird. <laughs> Everybody's asking. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> it does. And it's just because I get my nails done. So. And I like doing them in funky colors. I'm gonna have to wrap up here soon. I'm gonna have to get Miss Miss from the bus stop. Yes, please. I'm adding that to the shipping list. Get it dry and get it out. I think she looks pretty. Okay, so yeah, a little bit more fine tuning here and there, and she will be finished. But for the most part, this lady is wrapped. There you go. Mistress of Flame on a Transformers cover. You guys watched her colored hair. I'll zoom you in for a little bit of detail. Fun, fun, fun. Thank you guys for hanging out. Appreciate it. I will be back on this evening, probably 9 30, 10 o'clock, or let's say 8 30, 9 o'clock. Sorry, 8 30, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for Twitch. So keep an eye out for us posting up links for Twitch. Thank you, Preston. And I will be coloring with Copics again, and it will be Princess Allura, uh, basically a. Uh, portrait of Princess Allura on my Twitch channel. So thank you all for hanging out and watching me color the Mistress of Flame. Really appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful day. Oh, she's falling! <laughs>